if you have a copy of the Bible with you, join me as we turn to Romans chapter 8. And I will be reading verses 35 to 39. Romans chapter 8, verses 35 to 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So let us now turn to the Lord in prayer. As we focus our attention on this portion of the scriptures we come to you our father in heaven that we may receive help to understand and even lord to apply the truth embedded in this portion in our own life in our own journey Enable us, Father, to see your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, his love for us, and his desire, Lord, that we who believe in him might be at peace. So guide us in our study this morning. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Nais kong simulan ang ating pag-aaral by quoting Pastor Philip G. Kaiser when he was preaching Revelations 2 verses 8 to 11. Ganito po yung kanyang introductory statement nung pre-niche niya yung Revelations 2. I quote, We can praise the Lord that in America we still have a phenomenal amount of freedom compared to many countries. But that is beginning to change. Already Alliance Defending Freedom the Rutherford Institute, the Liberty Institute, and other Christian legal organizations have been having to defend Christian florists, bakers, photographers, nurses, doctors, Christian schools, pastors, and others who are being fined huge sums of money for supposed hate crimes. And the hate crimes really amount to believing the Bible or not wanting to perform an abortion or refusing to sanctify a homosexual union. The Liberty Institute has documented hundreds of cases of persecution of Christians for their Christian belief. So even though we still have a great deal of liberty in this country, persecution is beginning to heat up. Sa ating bansa, kamusta kaya? Ano kaya ang magiging direksyon? If you have been able to read the Soju Bill in the Congress, makikita nyo yung large statement there that 
could become like this sa atin as Christians and as a church. Kaya nga kung ito ay ipasa at maging bata sa atin, ang isang nakikita kong magiging struggle natin ay yung provision doon sa discrimination na sinasabi. Kaya nga, maaaring sabihin natin, hindi tayo persecuted katulad ng mga Kristiyano sa Nigeria, sa India, sa Pakistan. Pero, yung preacher, sabi niya, doon sa Amerika, may ibang uri at presentation yung persecution. At yun nga, eh, dumadami ng dumadami because of the refusal of Christians to compromise yung mga natutunan nila sa so scripture. And I believe, when soju bill is passed, unti-unti lalabas yung mga particulars kasi broad lang yung statement when the soji will begin to complain against Christian. Yung kaibigan nga naming pastor na supposed to be gusto sana naming magkasal kay Rachel, hindi nire-renew niya pero hindi niya tinuloy dahil sa soji bill. Sabi ko bakit hindi niya tinuloy? Eh kasi inaabatan niya na ito. Sabi niya, baka makulong ako kasi kung lapitin siya ng marami ng mga tao at sabi niya, baka makompromise. So, yung ibang mga pastors, ang ginagawa nila, pag hindi na sila nakapag-renew ng lisensya, ay gagawin nila, sabi ko, paano ka magkakasal? Magkakasal muna sila sa legal and then, hindi muna magsasama tapos magkakaroon ng Christian ceremony. At doon lamang sila. After that, finally, i-consume. So, walang, walang sabit doon sa law. But, ang isang alam kong pamamaraan na nabanggit ko na sa inyo is to specifically state, halimbawa, kung tayo kukuha, siguro ilalagay natin sa constitution natin that our pastor will only use the license that the government provided in marriage for reform Baptists or for this church alone. Ibig sabihin, kung magkaroon ng lisensya si Ranji, ni Pastor Ranji, ang ikakasal niya lang ay, o nagkakaginagamit niya lang yung lisensya magkasal ng reform Baptists or members ng TRB. CC. Kaya nga pag hindi may lumapit sa'yo, gusto nila magpakasal, di mo kinasal dahil sa soji sila, eh, yun ang gagamitin mo na I am not, though I have a license, I am not allowed by our church to marry somebody who is not a Reformed Baptist or not a member of our church. So, yan ay isang halimbawa lamang pero yung mga normal kung mangyari sa atin to may magpapagawa sa inyo dahil may negosyo kayo at magpapagawa sila na uh, o kukunin kang photographer ng same-sex marriage no? will you as a Christian be there so sa sexual union ng mga tao na ito or kung doktor ka maging meron din tayong batas sa abortion already na pag napirmahan at may lumapit sa yung gusto mong pa-abort at hindi mo gawin ano kaya yung demand ng abuti mo so there are so many things that is happening all around us. And this morning, 
I want to consider what Paul states as tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it comes to us. Varied in its presentation, varied in its application. But what does Paul mean that these things are coming and will be the experience of the church. Tignan natin, una, yung tribulation, what it means. As used in the Bible. Yung salita pong tribulation literally means to crush to press together, to compress, to squeeze in turn. Originally, it is expressed kung sa tao is a physical pressure on a man. It refers to troubles pressing upon someone from without. No, hindi sa internal, basically, such as persecution, affliction, or tribulation. And that word, sa Greek, is a strong term which never refers to minor inconveniences sa buhay. Kung may inconvenience ka, it's not a tribulation at all. It's not a persecution at all. Hindi po yun ang gamit, but only to real hardship. Kaya nga sa New Testament, it is translated in English, yung one Greek word na yon, 14 times as affliction, or 6 times as afflictions with S, 1 time as anguish, 2 times distress, persecution, Pinakamarami, tribulation, 16 times, or tribulations with S, 4 times, or trouble. So makikita nyo yung paggamit niya sa English. Hindi porke hindi tribulation yung pagkakasalin, hindi na. Kaya nga, pag tinignan mo yung key statement ni Paul, or, tribulations, or, 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 lima yun. di ba? It has two senses, basically. The metaphorical sense, trouble that inflicts distress. So, kung metaphorically used sa Bible, it is normally to be understood as a trouble that inflicts distress. An outside trouble, magkakaroon ka ng distress. Halimbawa, Matthew 13, verse 21. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. Ito yung parable sa soil. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. So the cause was tribulation or persecution arising because of the word. In Acts 11, 19, now those who were scattered after the persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but the Jews only. So dahil nga doon sa persecution, Ito yung nangyari. In Romans 5.3, And not only that, but we also glory in tribulation. Meaning to say, we glory in trouble that inflicts distress. Knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. So meron nag-glory sila, not simply because of the tribulation itself, but for what it is able to produce sa kanilang buhay. 
In Revelation 1.9, I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was on the island that is called Pasmon for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. So, there are times directly sinasabi na yung tribulations, itong mga distress na ito, persecution, is connected with being a believer who stand for the word of God. But there is another sense. Ito yung tinatawag na inward experience of distress, usually translated as affliction or trouble. It is something inward. Hindi siya uh, an outward pressure that causes distress to the person affected, but this is an inward experience. In 2 Corinthians 2 verse 4, Sabi niya, for out of much affliction and anguish of heart, I wrote to you with many tears, not that you should be grieved, but that you might know the love which I have so abundantly for you. So to sa text, it's obvious something deep within the apostle has taken place. In Philippians 1.16, the former preached Christ from selfish ambition, not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my chains, but the latter out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel. So dito sa verse 35, tignan natin yung ibang word na ginamit na or. Yung una po yung salitang distress uh, literally ito ay isang narrow space no? a type uh, place where one has to go through yung mahirap, makipot, wala kang kumbaga sa ano wala kang ibang mapupuntahan yun lang talaga kasi basyado siya narrow so, ano yung problema dito? It has in view the distress which arises from within. Yung uh, anguish, discomfort. The picture is of a person finding themselves in a tight corner without the possibility of escape. So, it causes severe distress it causes anguish. So, tribulation, tapos distress, sabi ni Pablo, you are caught in a narrow situation, there is no way to maneuver, hindi mo matakasan yung situation where you find yourself. Parang, misan, ginagamit din ito parang ganito kalaki yung space sa buhay mo. Nagkaroon ng problema, unti-unti. Parang gumagalaw siya, paliit ng paliit. Tapos, it's pressing on you. Habang parang sa tingin mo nag-move yun, it is causing great distress sa iyo because wala kang makita space to go that is safe. Yun po yung ibig sabihin. And then the second word is persecution, which means to put to flight or to pursue with repeated acts of enmity. In persecution, to put to flight, diba yung mga tao, halimbawa, in in Gaza today, sabihin ng mga Israelite soldiers doon sa northern Gaza to move to the south. Pinipressure sila. Bomba rito, bomba roon. So, anong gagawin mo? Wala namang pinipili yung bomba. 
hindi siya matalino para makita niya sino yung hamas at sino yung hindi. So, walang pakialam ang Israel pag hindi ka sumunod. Kaya may bata kang dala doon o wala, babambahin ka. So, you have to move. Saan ka pupunta? Diba? You are persecuted. You are put to flight. Even though you do not want to, o kaya sabi mo, ano bang kasalanan kung hindi man ako hamas, hindi naman ako laban sa... O kaya kristyano kang palestino, kristyano ko, wala akong kinalaman dyan. Pero wala. And it means to pursue with repeated acts of enmity. Yun talaga yung picture. Ganun ang persecution or pag tinignan natin yung pinepersecute sa India, sa mga barrios, kung ano nung gagawin ng mga kapitbahay para lang talaga umalis yung family, maangki nila yung property at kung ano man meron sila. Gawa sila ng gawa kung ano. Yun yung mabigat na persecution sa India. Hindi ka tatantanan ng mga kapitbahay mo. Lalo na kung nainggit sila sa iyo dahil may kaya ka, nag-umasenso ka. Manakawi nila kung ano man meron ka. So, iba-iba yung bagay na yon Pero walang hinto. And usually, the Gospels teach that persecution, itong word na ito, sa Greek, arises because of the word. So when the Gospels use it, nabasa mo ito sa Gospel, yun yung tinutukoy. It's because of the word. So, dito, Paul is reminding us that persecution are not electives. Kung maka sa ano, sa nag-aaral ka, required sa curriculum, kung kristyano ka. Kung tunay kang kristyano, Persecution is not elective or tribulation is not elective. It is a required don't say school of discipleship. Because sabi nga, sa gospel, if you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, sabi ni Jesus, I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Sinabi rin ni Jesus sa Matthew 10, 36, a man's enemy will be the members even of his own household. So matindi talaga ang mangyayari. Then there is the word famine. Literally, it means to fall short. Tuwan-tuwan nga ako dito sa Greek eh. Alam niyo ba kung ano yung famine sa Greek? Limos. Diba? Alam ko lang ako kaya naglilimos ka. <laughs> Ganun yung takbo ng isip ko. Sabi ko, tama sa Tagalog to. Limos. No? Destitute ka. At dahil doon, you are in need. And literally, ginagamit siya madalas in terms of hunger, metaphorically, starved. Uh, nangyari yung uh, kristyano ka pa, pero wala nag-feed sa'yo ng word. So, hindi ka namang gutom physically, but your soul become famished because there is no prophet. There is no teacher. Yun ang nangyayari. And then you have nakedness. It only means a lack of clothes because you have no means of getting any. Wala kang means. So there are people na may mga kristyano nalagay sa ganong situation kung ano yung Dahil tumaka sila o persecuted sila and nakedness is being mentioned. And then peril is whatever danger that lies ahead. So imagine mo, 
yun, and then, siyempre, yung sword, literally, is a speak of execution. Being executed. Di ba, nung time nung uh, nag-aaway yung mga Kristiyano, tsaka supposed to be claiming to be Christians, and mga Islams talagang swords no? persecuted. Or the Christians versus the Jew. Mga Jew galit yan sa Christians because sa history nila. Pero yung Christians na inisip nila more Catholic parang gano'n. Because they, they were persecuted. So this complete a sevenfold series of adversaries. Five are very terrible, but the seven itself. I binanggit ni Paul, all of which, kung kilala niyo si Paul, na-experience ito ni Paul. All of them. But he used it because sa kanyang experience, it has been common among those who decided to become Christians. It is the instrument of the devil and Paul is saying no matter how hard is it di ba yung kaya ako nagsimula sa definition pag tinignan mo yun parang pag mangyari sa akin yun ano man doon sa ito na yun mabigat yan wala kang mapagpilian di ba and yet Paul is saying It should not interrupt. It will never interrupt the love of Christ toward us. Purong mahirap ang itindihin yun. Mahal ako ng Diyos, kinakalinga ako ng Diyos, pinoprotekta na ako ng Diyos, pero, pwede kong maranasan itong mga to. So, how can you explain that? Di ba? Pagkita nyo yung sinabi ng verse. Ano sinabi ng verse? Linaw-linaw eh. Ganun yung sinabi. Ang tangi sinasabi ni Pablo dito, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation. Ibig sabihin, this has the tendency to affect us as Christians, as those who have loved being loved by Christ. We, eh tayo, pag mag-isip ni pa tayo, eh, kung mahal talaga ako ng Diyos, ba't niya iaalaw mangyari yun? It's not a question to Paul. Paul is saying, this is going to happen. But when it happens, and when you experience it, remember this, it cannot separate you from the love of Christ. It should not. Tapos eh, nag-quote siya, may kinote siya. As it is written, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Huh? So, hindi ko alam pa paano i-interpret to ng mga health and wealth and pero sinasabi niya, that would be your luck. O sasabihin ba natin, siguro nung panahon lang ni Paul yan. Pero alam nyo, dahil you have been praying and experience all over ng mga Kristiyano, ganyan. Ang dami. Hindi pa tumarating sa, sa ating bansa. Pero may ibang persecution na ang tingin natin, light lang. Pero wala pa talaga yung ganong uri ng persecution on a religious manner. Kaya yun ang nangyayari sa Israel ngayon, hindi rin natin pwedeng isipin ganun. Nalulungkot nga ako na misa nababasa ko sa mga Christian, sa mga pastor na We should be siding with with them on what grounds, sabi nila, because they are the people of God. They are not the people of God. It is an insult to the church. Who are the people of God right now? The Jew? Eh tayo, gentle tayo. Are we not the people of God right now? So we have to defend them, but I'm going to defend a secular nation. Even the conservative and the most ultra-orthodox 
are deniers of Christ. It's wrong for a Christian to say, let's stand for Israel. I would rather say, let's join Israel for their complaint of what heinous acts was done to them. I could agree easily with them that what their enemies did, and that is documented, diba? Meron silang nilabas, kung napanood nyo, meron silang nilabas, grabe talaga yung pagpatay. But I cannot agree with Christians in the internet saying, if you, if, if I as a Christian will not agree with them, what kind of a Christian I am? They are the people of God. No, they are not. They don't even believe in Christ. Israel is a secular state. You know that? It is a secular state. Only if you believe in the Bible, only if you perhaps believe in Christ. So, dapat erase natin kung ano yung tama. No. It's not a religious war. Whatever war is that. And why should we be much concerned about that and not with the war between Russia and yung ano nila? Diba? Or other war. Kaya nakalulungkot. Kaya i-understand natin na sinasabi dito ni Paul is whether you are Jew or you are a Gentile, since you are a follower of Christ, you will have tribulations, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sorry. In other words, anong itinuturo sa atin? That is the lot of Christians. Christians, as they live in this world, because we are not of the world, will experience that. Diba? Ano ba yung turo ni Jesus mismo? What is Christ teaching when He was still alive sa kanyang mga disipulo? Kung sila ay maging follower ni Christ. Ano ba yung turo ng ating Panginoon? Ang isang pinaka-classic is to think of the parable of the sower. Naalala niyo yung parable of the sower. Di ba? In Matthew 13, beginning verse 18, Therefore here, sabi niya, the parable of the sower, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes, snatches away what was sown in this heart. This is he who received seed by the wayside. But he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has not no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbled. But siya nag stumbled Hindi kasi siya tunay na nanampalataya. The assumption, yung tunay na mananampalataya because of the word. Lahat niya na meron siya may experience ng persecution or tribulation. Ano yung difference? The difference, yung tunay na kristyano, kahit mayroong tribulation at persecution na dumating sa buhay niya, hindi siya immediately mag Ang nag lang, eh, yung word, hindi nag ng maayos sa kanyang buhay. Jesus is illustrating the power of the reality of tribulation in this parable. Yun yung ina-emphasize niya, yung reality ng tribulation. The seed that falls on shallow rock, rocky ground, that cannot produce plants to yield fruit represents people who hear the word and quickly receive it with joy, not realizing lot na mga Kristiyano yung tribulation. Kaya nga, eventually, 
they sign on to tribulation or persecution. Think of Matthew 7, verse 14. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Sa Greek po, maganda basahin yan. Kasi yung root word na tribulation ang nakalagay dyan. Jesus' warning in this verse is that, sabi niya, narrow is the gate and difficult is the way. That is related to the standard term for tribulation or distress. The road to life is narrow. Why is it narrow, sabi ni Jesus? Because it is characterized by distress, affliction, and tribulation. That's the original Greek rendering of that. Bakit siya narrow? Kaya nga, sabi sa English, narrow is the gate and difficult is the way. Why is the way difficult? In that narrow, you enter the narrow gate, difficult is the way, that word difficult is the very same Greek word about tribulation. So, the teaching there is that the road to life is narrow. Because it is characterized by distress, affliction, and tribulation. Kaya nga yung iba na hindi talaga naging converted, pagdating nun, atrasan. They prefer the broad way that leads to destruction. But not the narrow way, the difficult way that leads to life everlasting. In John 16, 33, These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world, you will have what? Tribulation. But be of good cheer. No? Ito na naman yung mga difficult, ano, di ba? Why would be I have a difficult, uh, magiging cheerful ako? Eh, ang aabutin ko, tribulation, tapos be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Diba? So, ang joy mo is being in the Lord. Sinasabi dito sa Bible, sinasabi ni Jesus, diba, there will be tribulation. Doon sa Matthew 24, binanggit niya pa, there will be a great tribulation. Oh. And yet, ano yung solusyon? Sabi na ito ang kristyano, rapture yung solusyon. Diba? Ira-rapture tayo para hindi natin, pag tumitindi na daw yung tribulation natin sa buhay, ira-rapture tayo ng Panginoon. Eh di sana, yan ang subject matter. Diba? Jesus could easily have encouraged you and me. Huwag kayo matakot sa tribulation. Huwag kayo matakot sa affliction. Anyway, pag tumindi na yan, I will rapture you to be with me. No single statement. The Apostle Paul also, who understand what rapture is, as no statement, on that. Pareho din yung kanyang sinabi. Sinabi niya, ang Panginoon. Sabi ng Panginoon, in me, you will have peace. So peace is not being raptured and taken out of tribulation. But peace is to be found in Christ. Kaya na, be of good cheer. Kahit in this world, you will have tribulation. I have overcome the world. So, ang nagbibigay sa atin ng peace, nagbibigay sa atin ng, nag-aalis sa atin ng fear, ano? Hindi yung wala kang tribulation o hindi ka padanasin ng tribulation. Yung mabibigat na sitwasyon sa buhay. 
Kaya nga pag may nagtuturo ng ganyan, mag-ingat kayo kasi natural reading in Scripture. Kung yun ang solusyon, bakit ni hindi itinuro ni Christ? Bakit hindi niya in-encourage? Ginamit ni Pablo yung rapture. Tama? But in what context? Di ba yung mga namatayan? Nalungkot sila kasi mga mahal nila sa buhay na matay. Iniisip nila, ano? Paano na sila? Nauna na silang namatay, hindi pa bumabalik ang Panginoon. So to encourage them, ginamit ni Pablo yung meeting in the air. In fact, sabi niya eh, mauna pa sila bago tayo. Oh, naalala niyo yun? Oh. Kung ito ang solusyon ng Diyos para sa atin na makaiwas tayo sa tribulation at hindi na tayo mag Bakit silent ang scripture in encouraging us? Don't be discouraged. Face whatever tribulation is there. Face whatever is there, the enemy. When the things got get tough for you, for the church, I will rapture you and be with me. That would be very encouraging. But there are no words like that. Nga sabi, makakaroon ka ng marami, makakaroon ka ng ganito, be of good cheer. Because I have overcome the world. Or peace I give to you. Not as the world gives it. So doon ka titingi. Doon ka. So you just, i-correct nyo ako kung mali ako. Is there any encouraging words for the suffering we are going to face na ang ginamin ay yung marapture tayo? Napakalaga ng issue ng suffering. Halos lahat ng New Testament books speaks of that. Paano tayo ma-encourage? Paano tayo mabigyan ng comfort? Kung totoo yun, sana yun yun. Gagamitin.